Right then, Dave, this is our six-month update. Yes, so this is the podcast of a six-month sort of review. We've been live just over six months now. We're recording this on the 5th of June. And I think it's a good time, it's a nice milestone to sort of look back and see what we've achieved, what we've realised, and also what we've got coming up. Indeed. So if this is the first podcast which you've been listening to, in the starting or in the early days of Understanding E, it was one of our objectives is not only just to create the video guides and the tools which you're using on Understanding E, but was also to share the story, the challenges, the obstacles which get in our way <laughs> on a daily basis um, because this is like our way of sharing back with you the challenges to let you know that you're not alone you may be listening to this in your car or at home or in work maybe and the thing is the role is of an entrepreneur is never straight at all in fact, I saw a picture on LinkedIn earlier, Dave, which had corporate on the left-hand side, and he was running around this mouse wheel, and yeah. uh, happy as Larry. And then on the right-hand side, you had the world of the startup. And, of course, he was trying to push this great big boulder up a very vertical <laughs> hill. And I'm pretty sure we can all relate to that as well. Mm-hmm. And, again, this is the reason for the podcast, is to give you an insight, to let your hair down, and to for us to let our hair down. David's got far more than me, but (laughs) it is to give like an insight to some of our challenges and some of our successes and also failures as well in the background. So, Dave, that's enough of me talking. What have we got lined up? Well, firstly, I think we're going to take a look at actually as a business of understanding where we are at now we are six months in. Mm -hmm. So we have just passed 1500 members on the Understanding East site which is a massive milestone for us. Have we really done that? I believe so, yeah. It's There's a few different areas where we can look at the members, um, but the ones that I've been looking at do show that we're over 50. Yeah, 1,501. <laughs> well, there we go. And we are incredibly close to 6,000 forum posts. Now, this is crazy because literally, I think it was two, three weeks ago, I went and stole the 5,000th post when Matt said, oh, we're on 4,999. <laughs> and I just went and... Oh, posted got... something random, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, 5,000. But yeah, in like the space of two or three weeks, we've nearly had another 1,000 forum posts. The forums are busier than ever before, which is fantastic. And that's, you know, we're really happy that people are finding it useful and they're talking to each other. That's what it's all about. Yeah, that's right. And we've seen numerous posts where you've been in on the forums because we do run this policy this something which we live by which is that there's no such thing as a daft question and we're trying to foster this safe environment for you to be in so that you feel that you can ask those questions and we're never going to take the p at <laughs> you for asking something daft we're genuinely gonna help you as best we can and again that's been reflected in the replies which we're getting back and dave we have been in top six thousand because it's six thousand and fourteen. Oh, oh have we done it today that must have been from this morning because last night it was just under so and not saw that you'd been on a forum bender this morning way before i'd been awake <laughs> so there you go six thousand forum posts which is a nice another milestone for us to hit six months in yeah not bad at all Matt, what about the page views? How are they doing? How busy is the site in general? Because you deal with all the stat stuff regarding the site. I don't really look into it that much. Yeah, to give you a heads up, they are really good. That's all I'm going to (laughs) say. They are really, really good. And again, we made some changes to the Understanding East site. And some of the stuff which I've learned in doing that for the Understanding East site is that I'm going to share with those things with you how to put a content delivery network on your Magento website. Now, the moment you say content delivery network, it sounds really scary and really nerdy, but the reality is it costs like $9 a month and it's two settings in Magento. It is like really straightforward. And of course, those settings are also taken notice by M2E Pro so that when you've got your listing images on eBay, for example, is that those images are gonna be transferred by the content delivery network. So it doesn't matter where your customer is in the world, is that they're going to get those images really, really quick to them. And again, fast loading sites basically equal more sales. And again, that applies not only to traditional websites, 
in inverted commas, but that also transposes back to eBay as well. Fast loading listing means that you've got a higher chance of sale and actually selling the products. And it's really straightforward to do. And I can't wait. We do the tutorial to show you how to do it because it is really straightforward. And again, it will be like a 25 minute tutorial, I think, because we're going to do it in one great big hit. So rather than getting you warmed up and explain what a CDN is and then go off and do it, we're just going to wrap it up into one tutorial. So when that one comes out, grab a cup of tea, grab a cup of coffee or soft drink and dive in with us. And we'll show you how to do it. It's like really straightforward. But we do need to explain what a CDN is or content delivery network is and why you really do need one as well. Anyway, coming back onto the topic, the site, squillion times faster. I think it loads technically in about two seconds or less. Nice. (laughs) I mean, you've got to bear in mind as well, our site is a little bit different to most sites due to the amount of not just images but video content as well. So I guess it is quite a load-heavy website, although we do externally host some of the stuff. It is quite a big site now with the number of tutorials we've got live. We'll come on to that in just a minute. Yeah, and just the sheer amount of traffic. And again, we would have far exceeded the limits um, with Simple Service if we didn't have a content delivery network in place which would probably be the same for you listening to this, is that if you're doing any large amount of listings onto eBay, that that will draw a large amount of traffic just by the laws of averages. And the CDN, sorry, favourite topic of mine after some coding yesterday, (laughs) will make a massive difference. So you can stay on a a cheaper package for Magento and not have to worry about upgrading for quite some time soon. So, sorry, Dave, you were saying. No, I think the next thing that for me especially is one of the biggest achievements in the past six months was actually a month ago when we hosted the eBay webinar. Oh, wow. And Dave, I'm going to go off on a bender here. Go for it. Okay. So, Dave, what did we do in the preparation for that webinar? Let's start from the beginning. That was largely thanks to a friend of ours at eBay. He's a fantastic guy and he really got understanding me from the day one and you know he's a fantastic guy and he sort of made that happen and Mm -hmm. got us on the seller email and everything else which was a fantastic opportunity for us Mm -hmm. and boy did we deliver well that's it because we then realized okay this is great this is our opportunity to not only prove to everyone who watches it but also to ebay that we can bat at this level so to speak and then the realization hit us that if we mess this up we're not going to get another chance to do this you know this was sort of like trial by fire so for about two weeks before it went live and before anyone the email had gone out by ebay we had done about three dry runs of the whole webinar and Basically, I'd put so many contingency plans in place. So if this didn't work, we were then going to do this. And if that didn't work, we'd do this. And we'd have a backup system here to do this. And we'll have a backup account if that doesn't sync with M3 Pro for whatever reason. We had backups of backups of oh, backup crazy. plans. It was there's just so many layers in there. Anything could have gone wrong. Again, we were going to do it live in front of a very large audience of people. And again, we felt this personal commitment back to this contact back at ebay so we had to deliver on our part and we had to deliver to you so if you were listening to that webinar then we had to show you that it was possible to go from zero to installing magento to creating a product to getting that product onto ebay and be able to process that order live in just 60 minutes but that was quite a tall order to be able to do it oh yeah we went a little bit over, but largely we did it. I think by the time we finished the whole thing and then there was hundreds of questions that we went through afterwards, but I think if you went over on a Bank Holiday weekend, you went through, was it about 200, 300 questions? 201. 201, you're crazy. But yes, I think we finished the actual from start, from nothing to listing our products on eBay and process an order in 65 minutes, I think, was when we had that done. So we're a little bit over, but... I think we proved the concept pretty well. Yeah, we did indeed. And that was quite a challenge on the weekend to get through so many of the comments. And again, I felt that that's what was needed for you. So if you asked a question during that webinar, then I personally guarantee that I've replied to you and your message. And I know that because I went through every (laughs) single question which was asked. And again, we are not choosing the easy route. 
we could have just summarised those. But that wasn't personal. Me and Dave, we're kind of working out that there's a lot of things which we could cheat upon. And mm-hmm. we're not going to do that. The reason being is the harder the task is, the more likely it's going to be massive worth to you. So that was just one of the examples. Yeah, it did take the bank holiday weekend to do it and the Monday. But it was edited out and live as fast as we could. And Dave, just explain beforehand. So that morning, I remember being sat in my kitchen. I got up on the worktop. And what went on there? This was just proof that we had spent so long going through this. So we both knew the, the presentation, the webinar, inside out. And Matt had put Skype on his phone on a video call. So he was down in the kitchen and I was at my desk. And we basically, for an hour, we did the presentation to ourselves. And Matt had no slides in front of him. He had no notes. Literally just freestyled it from memory. And that was the level to which we knew what we were talking about. And it was that level of comfort which I think made it such a well-received webinar. Yeah, so it didn't go down. It wasn't by pure fluke that it was a huge success. And just thinking back to you and your business, that this stuff doesn't happen by accident. You have to do the grind. You have to get in there. You have to put the time in. And when we, we know what that challenge is about. And again, this is what this podcast is about to point out is that you may be seeing and understand the need from the outside and thinking, wow, this is like the forums are going mental. They're getting huge amounts of page views, blah, blah, blah. But we're working our nuts off here in the background. And we know that's what you do as well with working your nuts off <laughs> you're putting the hours in and that's your role as the entrepreneur is to do as best as what you can with the resources which you've got available and preparation is massive to this and again we're late on some of the tutorials i would have loved to have had so much more live by now and again we're six months in and i'm thinking crap and i'm not going to cut that bit out by the way because that's really what I'm thinking is it's like, oh, we could have that and we could have had that done and so on and so forth. But the thing is, is that these things need to be planned because it's just like the webinar. We need to think about you as a person and the different types of person which would be listening to that webinar and the different levels of their businesses and being able to dumb it down to Matt proof level and Dave proof level so that anybody can pick it up. And preparation was key so that when we hit it and it just went flowed. It just literally flowed all the way through. And I remember saying, oh, Dave, what about that? And you went off for five minutes by yourself. And- yeah, yeah. That was my role. Obviously, Matt was driving, so to speak. He was in control of the screen. So I am sort of limited to what I can, just to make sure that what I'm saying, I have no control over the screen. So it can't always match up, is what I'm trying to say. So whenever Matt <laughs> had a dry throat i imagine after all the talking he was doing and i would try and pick up for a few minutes and fill in some i think i was covering some history about magento and ebay and other bits and pieces like that um again just keep it interesting yeah we did and again i think we were covering like worst case scenarios what happens to my internet goes down so i had a backup yeah. plan for the internet and to be honest dave with the amount of work which we've done even if my internet drops and i couldn't even get to a telephone box for example <laughs> that you would have been able to hold it down by yourself. Yeah, because, you know, I'd given each other the presentation and that was one of the backups. What if Matt loses connection, goes offline? I had to be able to stand in and give the same webinar. So I said in part of the preparation the week before, I'd given it to Matt without the slides, just with a few notes that I'd scribbled down and Matt had given it to me. So we both heard it probably a dozen times. And yeah, that's it. It's all about, you know, these things don't happen by chance. It's preparation. Yeah, absolutely. Again, this was like organised back in September last year, something like that. So sometimes these things can take many, many months to come to fruition and you've got to have the grit to stay with these. Um, So talking about that, going off to just one of the notes, which I've seen down at the end, Dave, which is that we may be, I say in inverted commas, maybe speaking at Magento Live as well. And it's going to be the same kind of grind. It's going to be the same kind of preparation Mm. which is needed. Because, again, if we're going to be stood up in front of a room full of people, then they're going to be a whole mix. They're going to be from end users. They're going to be system integrators. You're going to have eBay there. You're going to have Magento. Extension developers. Yeah, exactly. There's going to be a whole raft of things there. You've got to cater 
for such a wide audience, but also to keep the pace fast and the interest levels high as well, which is one of the things which I've noticed with maybe some of the other presentations which I've seen, and not in Magento Live, but elsewhere, is that you've got to come across as having a passion for the subject. So anyway, Dave, what's next on our list? Well, the next on the list, Matt, is something that you uh, mentioned earlier in the Skype chat, and that was the struggle and sort of the major challenges, the weekly meetings, the emails. Like I said, the, for anyone listening to this, you see understanding E as the sort of front end of it. You see the guides, you speak to us in the forums, and occasionally you'll drop us an email, and certainly we'll get back to you. It might not be straight away, but we will get back to you. And I think this was an interesting point by you, because I know that when we first started doing Understanding E, like I said, it was in August, September last year when we first started planning it and all this iteration of Understanding E, at least. Mm -hmm. um, we both had sort of grand ideas of where it would get to, but we were both under no illusion the effort that it would take in order to get it there. Yeah, we would have been at 1,500 members a long time ago if we'd done some naughty things, which we refused to do. Just a point, that was my target for day one was 1,500 users. <laughs> it just so happened it took us six months to get there. <laughs> but we did it the right way, I think, yeah. is the key. There. That's the difference. You can cheat at stuff. And the thing is, is that it's never really worth the effort to do it. So, yeah, the struggle. These things is that, going back to what we were saying earlier, that the harder the struggle, the bigger the challenge this is, or whatever you do, if it's worthwhile doing, do it. And that may be negotiations with a supplier, for example, is that the harder it is to get in with that supplier, the harder it is for one of your competitors to get in with that supplier. So embrace the struggle, I think is what we're trying to say. Mm. The other thing as well, which I'll point out in a moment, so I've just noted that on my notepad. So we've got the weekly meetings, the emails, and again, we've also been working for free for the last six months. So it's only about now where we're actually considering taking any form of money out of the business as well. But again, we just want to get to a contingency fund kind of basis. And again, we do have staff, which we'll cover off in a few moments as well. So Dave, moving on to the key points, what we got? Well, I think you touched on the first point that we had a little earlier, Matt, and that was about the site speed and the performance upgrades. We won't mention CDN again. <laughs> we covered that one. We had a updated homepage for anyone who we did email a few people off the back of a, might have been the afternoon tea before we moved to happy hour. And that's probably a good point as well, which I've totally missed. We'll talk about that in a minute. But yes, we asked a few people that we know had used Understanding E and the tutorials to give us some feedback, some open feedback that we could put on the homepage. And now if you see the homepage, it looks quite different to what it did back in January. And we figured that the actual aim or target of what Understanding E set, not, it didn't really change, but the offering of what we now have live was a lot clearer because we'd actually been and done it. So, yeah, the site had a homepage update and a few other tweaks around the site, um, a few keyword changes, guides became tutorials and little things like that. And there totally are reasons why we did that. Um, that's up to Matt if he wants to go into those. Speed and clarity. Speed, clarity, and also Google. Oh, and also Google. There was nice little add-ons which I put in there for that too. And again, we're not employing any SEO firms to do anything for us. We're just keeping it organic. Again, we're choosing the hard route, which is that the hard route, same for you and your business as well, is that the hard route is making content there's one very simple rule which again we saw an increase in the panda update sorry let me just explain that google do revisions to their search algorithm and that one a short while ago was for google panda version 4 and we saw a seven percent increase over the space of about a week from that being released and our speed increases as well so it's kind of like a double whammy win for us for that and my point being is that there's one rule which you can never go wrong with when especially when it comes to building a presence online which is quality unique content is that if you follow those three pillars for anything which you do on the web then you can never go wrong you will never get slapped by google you'll never do anything naughty and again you'll choose the hardest route possible quality unique content and the thing is that quality unique content is really hard to do and again, it's difficult, and that's why people cheat at this. And that's why we're never going to suggest that you do, because it's the wrong thing to do. And again, we want you to build a business which will last a long period of time. And the right way to do that is the way which we're doing it, 
which is to build quality, unique content. And also other things it's like a community at the same time. What else do we have, Dave? I think we might as well mention the happy hour, basically the weekly meetups. When we first started those, they were branded as coffee mornings. And we would get together every Tuesday at 10 o'clock in the morning. And we would basically have a meetup. We'd either discuss a topic or a handful of topics um, with anyone who wanted to join us. who could take half an hour, an hour out of the day just to see what was going on in the world and like I say if we had something cool to share that we'd been working on or some updates or some news within the industry that had come out then we could discuss it in sort of an open manner and obviously as understanding has grown the coffee mornings were becoming more and more popular and we were getting more and more members to the site that were from America and from Australia and we tried it about three weeks ago to four weeks ago where we did the first afternoon tea and then we moved it to the afternoon so that the time zone switch made it easy for America to join us, whether they're in the east or the Pacific coast, just so that they could join us. And the feedback was fantastic. I mean, the feedback was fantastic from the Americans. They thought it was great. They'd never done this before. And they really enjoyed hearing from us and from you guys as well over in the UK. But a few people in the UK mentioned that this was now sort of encroaching onto school pickup time and they couldn't make it. And or it was towards the sort of end of day dispatch and they were mad busy getting all the orders out the door. We could totally appreciate that. You know, myself and Matt have both been there. Mm-hmm. So that led us to happy hour, which is where we're at now. And that is every Tuesday still. We do the meetup at 8.30 in the evening time here in the UK. And that now means that Australia can join in as well. Granted, it is a little early in the morning for them. Yeah, it's half past five. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on which coast you're on in Australia, but yeah, it's pretty early. But we get the dedicated ones, so, or just the early risers who join us anyway, which is fantastic. And also it means that it's still a great time for the Americans to join us as well, as well as more people now from the UK can still join us or Europe can join us as well because the kids have gone to bed or, you know, Coronation Street, EastEnders has gone off, <laughs> whatever else is going on. Yeah, well, this is the, just to give some clarity here as well, Dave, is that we know that it's quite early in Australia to join us. We also know that it's quite late in the evening for the UK. But just to put this into some form of context is that we're not asking anything which we wouldn't feel doing ourselves. Just so let me just put this example. I've just been chewing my dinner here in the background. And the reason being is that I've already been up for eight hours and it's the first time around I've just got to eat. (laughs) So I'm getting up at five o'clock in the morning and doing as much as I can by the time Dave gets in. So and we're recording this at 20 past one in the afternoon right now. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens on a Tuesday. I'm up at five o'clock. I'm in doing the stuff which I need to so that we can then hit the grain running during the day when Dave joins us about nine, nine thirty. <laughs> <laughs> hint, hint. But Dave, I'm taking the piss out, but let's be fair here. Dave is in here and he's on much later than what I am now. Yeah, Matt used to, it's sort of a new thing. I think it's due to McDonald's breakfast that gets up early. Oh, yeah, and there are coffees. <laughs> it used to be the point where I do work much better in the evening. I'm really not a morning person. So the happy hours are great for me. I'm fantastic. But I guarantee you by Tuesday now, as soon as we come off the coffee morning, Matt is knackered. He's been awake for, what, 15 hours. But like I said, Matt will go and then I will carry on for another two or three hours into 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. I prefer working at that time than I do in the morning. So that does mean that now Matt starts at 5. I can call it a day anywhere from 12 to 1. There's only like four hours <laughs> where one of us is not working on something, which yeah. is quite good, really. Which is quite good. I like the crossover. It works really, really well. And with Dave, we're going to mention about you going across the United States for a couple of months in a few moments. But the crossover is there on the phone. You may think that we're recording this in the same room, and it was actually a discussion with Mark last week, <laughs> which was, uh, I didn't realise that you two were in two different locations. Yeah, we're about three hours away by train. And if you listen to this and didn't know where we're based, you just could grab Google and look up Bristol in the United Kingdom, and then look up Manchester in the United Kingdom as well, and you'll see the distance between that, and that distance is three hours on a train, which stops only a handful of times all the way through. Yeah, it is. It's quite a distance. 
Yeah, it's quite a boring train journey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The wonders of Skype and email and instant chat and WhatsApp is just like that Dave was sat next door. And that's it. This is definitely, with what we're doing at Under Sunday, we are the perfect example of remote working. Like, for example, so if I'm in Manchester and Matt's in Bristol, that might as well be Matt in Thailand and me in New York. It really doesn't matter. The only thing that we need to sync is our you know, time zones, make sure that we are both awake, the similar sort of time. But other than that, we can work anywhere in the world. And it's the same with Jim, with the recordings with Jim. We've been working quite closely with Jim over the past sort of few weeks. Jim's out in Thailand or in Vietnam. So that's another time zone that we have to sort of play with. But we do everything, like he joins us on the guides and the podcasts that we release this week. And again, you wouldn't really know that he wasn't with us in the same room. We work on the guides together, um, on these Mugento guides. Again, he's 2,500 miles away. But, you know, we can still work on the same document together. Yeah, exactly. And again, there's a whole new topic which goes on here, which is remote work and remote staff and outsourcing, a topic which I'd love to get to in a sensible time frame as well. But going back to those of you which have joined us on either the coffee mornings, the afternoon tea or the happy hours, is that we work by a process called Strikes. And I'm turning around on my whiteboard and it still says <laughs> Order Management, Amazon and Website Design Course. And that's all on the right hand side. That's the major priorities for us. We did have a slight tangent for the responsive eBay listing template builder, which we'll get onto in a moment. But yeah, it doesn't matter where your staff are in the world. It's going to, it's all down to open and clear communication. So yeah, an interesting topic for another day, Von. Well, I think that brings us on quite nicely to the growth of the UE team. <laughs> Rather unplanned. Yeah. Do you want to explain that one, Dave? Yeah. So for those of you who've listened either to previous webinars that we've done or in coffee mornings and afternoon tea, happy hours, we, you'll know that the understanding E team has grown. It's actually doubled in size. So originally, it was just me and Matt. It wasn't hard to double in size. <laughs> it was really impressive. We doubled in size. No, we um, we hired two people. And the first hire was a chap called Adrian, and he is our editor. So to give you an idea, every time that me, myself or Matt record a tutorial for the site, so let's just keep it simple in terms of time frame so we record an hour long tutorial Mm -hmm. that will then take me probably an hour to an hour and a half to do the audio edit so to cut out any mistakes to clean up the audio make sure that it's clear add in any pauses if i have a problem where i talk too quickly sometimes so we need to slow it down i say um quite a bit (laughs) and then once the audio is done Matt then has to go and take the slides or the video recording, if we've done screen recording, and match it up to the audio. And then that takes Matt another hour, an hour and a half, sometimes two hours, especially if he's going to throw in some nice annotations to highlight specific things that we're doing. So, oh, in all, we've recorded. It takes us an hour to record and then another three, maybe four hours to actually do the editing. And those four hours where we at editing, we're not recording. And it's the recording for us, which is where we get stuff done. So the first hire that we had, we realised it had to be an editor because that was the choke point for us, is that we could get so much more recorded if we had an editor. And that's what Adrian does. Adrian is based out in the Philippines. We send him the audio files and he gets through them fantastically. He does it as well, if not better than what I did. And that's fantastic because that then frees up our time to focus on more recording. And that's what helped with the Magento Foundation course. To put that into perspective, I think there's 59 tutorials as part of that course. Yep. When we launched in January, it had taken us three months to do, was it 55 or 56 guides that we launched with? We actually did the foundation course in five or six weeks. But that was because all the editing was going to Adrian. We literally just had to record, do the articles, and that was it. So that was our first hire, and it's been fantastic. It's freed up our time so much that even myself and Matt can have a day off at the weekend now and not feel guilty Mm -hmm. that we're not doing something. 
And then secondly, we have Tina, our VA, so to speak, who does a lot of the things which we should do, but we weren't doing because we were too busy doing everything else. Mm -hmm. Tina's fantastic. She looks after basically a lot of the admin stuff. She does a lot of things for social media, does some marketing bits and pieces for us. And yeah, Matt, I don't know if you want to go into any more detail about Tina and what she actually has helped us with so far. Oh, Tina's an amazing help. And again, we had a conversation earlier this week with Tina because she felt that she was probably not helping us as much as what she could do. And she had a lot of free time. And I had the blatant conversation with her, which is that this is amazing for us. <laughs> Don't worry. What we said originally is that we'll keep you on board as long as we've got a business going. And it's straightforward as that. So don't worry about that we're underutilizing you right now. What you're actually helping us with is amazing. Because when you register on the Understanding e-sites, there's that she's watching for those emails and we'll get back to them in a span of minutes, which is something which I just can't do anymore. So that's just one task. There's lots of others. We'll cover that in a separate podcast. We'll maybe just wrap it into the series on the Yeah, that'd be a nice one, yeah. Just to give you an idea, like, Tina has freed up our time, again, to not worry about the small stuff. It allows us to focus on the clouds and the dirt. Did you see Gary Vaynerchuk's vid map the other day? Yeah. There you go. It lets us focus on the clouds and the dirt. And for anyone who wants to know more about that, I'll put the video link below and a shout out to Gary Vaynerchuk because it's a pretty inspiring way of looking at things. And I think both myself and Matt take a very similar approach with understanding E. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we do indeed. Uh, just a quick observation for those of you listening. One of the major changes which has happened over the last six months is that if you go back to the website and go to understandthenee.com, go to blog and then click on podcast and listen to one of the earlier podcasts is that you'll notice Dave's confidence in talking has gone up. <laughs> and they, again, I've purposely done it on this podcast so that you can actually hear the difference between quite a timid Dave originally to quite a very confident Dave right now who can hold his own in pretty much every conversation which we have when it comes to understanding the Magento and some... Let me just justify that. When we first started doing the Magento guides, to me, I'd seen Magento maybe twice before properly and actually navigated it. And I'll be honest, I didn't like it. You know, I was from eSeller Pro. I knew eSeller Pro pretty well. Let me clarify. I wasn't working for eSeller Pro. I'd used eSeller Pro for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. So I knew the layout. I knew everything was. And then Magento was just not the same in anything wherever i thought something was going to be it wasn't and then matt went oh that's great that means when i'm taking you through it if you can understand it then anyone else watching it can understand it so matt in some of the early guys i've not got a clue it's like the first time that i'm seeing some of this stuff and i'm trying to ask questions as we're going along and i'm thinking god i need to pick this up quick so yeah that is really why i think because it is a confidence thing i was like I'm no Magento expert yet. <laughs> no, I'd had the Magento handbook, <laughs> which you'd sent over, Matt, and I would yeah. look through it and I'd gone, okay, I know some of these words. And then, yeah, so now I feel really comfortable with Magento. And again, just a different point for you listening to this as well. We hope you feel comfortable with Magento now because there was a time which I didn't have a clue either. And again, I'm quite open about it. It took me three attempts to get my head around Magento. It was very, very weird, very scary compared to other shopping carts. And it was quite strange. And yeah, don't don't feel alone. And let's go back to the forums. There's mm -hmm. no such thing as a dark question if you don't know the answer. So please ask, because we've both been in the same boat as you. We were both new once to Magento. And just ask. Never going to take the pee. Yeah. I think my signature on the forums is every expert was once a beginner. And it's that for a reason. That's exactly how I felt. And I'm not calling myself an expert in Magento by any means yet. But the amount that I've learned so far has been amazing. And I, I actually use that same analogy, that same story that Matt has just shared in an email this week to Philip, I believe it was. And he said he was, he was going to get back into Magento. He'd left it for a couple of weeks, but he wasn't getting to grips with it as quickly as he'd hoped. And I just said, Philip, I totally know where you're coming from. And just to let you know, it took Matt three times before he actually got where it was going and what it was doing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you definitely, you're not alone. It isn't uncommon. Magento isn't the most user-friendly when you first jump in. But, my God, it's powerful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. And, again, changing the topic, coming to the next bullet point. Again, we've been doing our homework 
especially Dave, <laughs> in the background. Yeah, some of us have had to do it. <laughs> they didn't know anything before. <laughs> so we themed the Magento admin, and we had the first update to the understanding e theme. And again, it's kind of testament to the work which we did starting back in last September to build this website theme for the Magento admin to make it non-nerdy. And again, this update, my favourite thing about the entire update, was that there was a green button in it. There was 70 other, sorry, 70 plus other revisions in this update, and they're all minor. My favourite one was that one of the major buttons was now green. So you had this no-button confusion when you were going to your orders page and making a search, because the search button was now green. And again, I purposely themed all the M2E Pro buttons green as well <laughs> on purpose. But outside of Magento on the orders page, in inventory, et cetera, et cetera, the primary task button, as it's called, is now green. So it's really straightforward for you and your staff. So we had that update come through as well. And a quick question, Matt, on that one. That update, how many fixes were there? Two. Two fixes. There were fixes for plugins which I'd not done with. Exactly. So actually, there was no fixes that was causing any problems with the theme. And they're my favourite type of updates where there's no fixes. <laughs> yeah, they were tweaks for it. Yeah. So. Massive hat tip to you, sir, for that one. Yeah, Dave, do we have over 150 tutorials now live? We do. I just went and had a look in the back end of the site, and I looked at all of the lessons that were active, and it's just gone over 150. That's nuts. That's crazy. And again, that's one of our challenges. So Dave, we rewrote or redid the majority of the Getting Started tutorials as well. And we updated a fair few of them and a couple of key sections were removed and replaced with other tutorials as well. So it's still the same length of tutorials, but the video guides which are in them have been updated and take you on a slightly different path to what we were doing before. What else have we got on that list? Oh, the responsive listing responsive template. Listing template. If anyone had joined us in happy hour this week, sorry, on the 3rd of June, you'll know absolutely loads. You'll know everything there is to know about the responsive listing template. But Matt, if you want to give us a brief on where we're up to with that. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep it really short. Basically, I've built a listing template builder, which is mobile responsive. So that means that you can have the same look and feel, no matter if your customer is using a mobile phone, an iPad, one of the eBay apps, because it works in there as well, or a good old desktop, is that your listing, your company, your brand, your styling will be transferred across all of the devices. And it's never been done before for eBay. And again, just to give you an insight to this really is like a world first. And it took me about that much coffee, which was a whole jar, <laughs> to do it, <laughs> yeah. and about two weeks of like non-stop coding. It was insane. So a hat tip today for letting me disappear for quite a chunk of time to do it. And again, I built it from the ground up. There was no foundations in there. It was built from the ground up to all the functionality which was put in, in the features. Um, they were written from scratch. And I think it's 12, 13,000 lines of code to be able to do this. There's even more now because I worked on it this morning again and yesterday to finish some other pieces off as well. Anyway, getting onto the topic is that you can have an eBay listing template, which you put into, say, M2 e Pro, and then so you put your items onto eBay and maybe you choose pink because you like pink this week. But later on is that if you're bored of that pink and you want to change it to green or blue or black, is that you can now update the theme, you can remote control your listings from WidgetChimp so that if you want to change it to a black theme with pink hyperlinks, for example, is that you can change the settings, click save, then go and click apply the theme settings. It will then go out into the content delivery network. Yeah, my favorite word at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and it, the next time someone views one of your listings with that template in there, then they'll see the latest version. Now, I didn't stop there. That was cool just by itself to be able to theme your listing templates remotely. But I didn't stop there. Your payment, your delivery, your contact details, your returns details, they're all dynamic as well. So if you want to change the terms, for example, or your delivery ETAs, that you can do remotely. There's no waiting for M2E Pro or any other software which you're using to revise those live eBay listings. You go and change it once in the back end of Widget Chimp. You click save, you click apply settings, and that's it. That could be one eBay listing. It could be 10,000. It could be more. It doesn't matter. 
is that those settings will then be applied to all of your live listings. And the crucial point here, instantly. You click that button, wait for the caches to be cleared, and every single one of your listings will be updated. It is kind of straightforward to that. Again, can't do it with product descriptions and images and things like that. But as far as the theme inside of the template, it's like this remote control for your listings. There is no like massive expensive overhead to this, is that we've built it in to understand any because our goal with understanding e is that we're not salespeople. We just genuinely want to help people. But to be able to do this, we do need to make some money along the line. So that's why we've got the premium side of understanding e. So our goal with the understanding e premium side is just to make it no brainer for you. So that's why when we were first doing the maths originally, Dave, sorry, not the maths, we were trying to do the reasons why someone should join premium mm-hmm. for understanding e. And when I said, well, I've got widget chimp. And Dave said, well, that's really cool. You know, right, giving away user accounts for that. I was like, well, mm. hell yeah. Well, again, it's just there to make a compelling argument to you listening to this that you should upgrade to premium. So you've got there, got the choice is that you can either have the basic package of Widget Chimp for £10, or if you've got multiple eBay accounts, then you want the £30 a month one. Or you can have understanding e-premium, have access to all the other tutorials, the premium guides, those 59 tutorials on how to build a Magento website from scratch. And again, the design tutorials and the advanced tutorials and the other tutorials which we've got, which are no-brainers, um, you gain access to that and you get Widget Chimp, which now has the responsive listing templates in there. And again, I've never seen anything like this. And again, I built it from the ground up with you in mind. So I took the other widgets which we've got, related items, dynamic eBay categories for your eBay store, the reviews widget so you can get your feedback in your listings automatically you have to do nothing for it in fact you can just choose yes or no whether you want it included press save apply settings job done anyway dave amazon and ebay they reached out to us and again in the last month or so haven't they yeah they have and this is an interesting one for us and Actually, it is flattering, really, that they want to talk with us. Yeah, just put this into perspective. We're just two random guys. I'm called Matt, and I'm based in Bristol, and Dave's from Kingdom <laughs> from Manchester. We rarely see each other, and we've just built this website called Understanding E, and we're getting approached by companies like this. Mm-hmm. It's insane. It's crazy. And when last time we were down at eBay, one of the senior managers for Europe turned around to us and said, it's fantastic. You guys are a jet ski and we're like an oil tanker, which means that you can respond so quickly. You can change direction, change which way you're going. He says, where for us, it takes us hours just to turn around. He said months. <laughs> months, yeah. <laughs> I think that was, they really liked where we were going, as well as just the whole general, I think the business philosophy that we were working with. Because when we first went down to go and see eBay, and the time since, they really do like where we're coming from in terms of how we are operating. So the easiest way to explain it is for understanding need to succeed, we know that we have to help you succeed. So basically our success is based on your success. And that's it. Some of our competitors, and this is not from me, but from people who have told me this, see them as just seeing their customers as monthly paychecks. And for us, nothing could be further from the truth. That's, you know, the majority of our members don't pay us anything. And that's the way it should be. In my book, so again, we're trying to fundamentally change e-commerce for the better, which is that I can't believe that people are paying the stupid amounts of money, which they are, to second generation software providers. And for an off-the-shelf bit of software, which doesn't actually customize to their business. It's nuts. Crazy. And I think the other thing that is quite unique about us is that a lot of our competition, again, not naming any names, basically keep running through rounds after round of investment or funding. You mean £10 million pounds worth of investment? Maybe. Again, don't want to <laughs> drag any names in here. Right, but there's a certain company which just took another 10 mil. Unbelievable. So to give you a heads up, right back at the beginning of understanding, I spoke to a couple of fellow business owners which know me really, really well. And kind of knew what I was capable of. And, oh, Dave, that reminds me of the comment which I got called this morning. Which yes. I'm very proud of. Now, there'll have to be a beep in it because there's a very naughty swear word in it. But I was very proud of that comment. So coming back onto the topic is that, yeah, I did speak to a couple of entrepreneurial people. 
and we were offered quite substantial amounts of money at the beginning for understand the needs just to get us started and we were like this is great but what on earth would we do with it why would we need that kind of money and this is tens of thousands of pounds yeah we had the discussion didn't we and we sort of we were very flattered firstly that someone would value a business which hadn't even launched yet at such an amount but secondly we had the discussion about, okay, so we put X amount on our desks right now. What do we go and do with it? It would have been a big pile of cash, and that was my problem. Yeah, and the answer was, well, actually, we're just going to carry on doing what we're doing now. Yep. You know, other than pay ourselves, that would have been the only thing. And granted, we may have thrown a little bit more money at advertising, but really, the only thing that could have grown understanding E is our time. So we would have just been paying ourselves a wage out of investment, which I certainly don't agree with. Uh, Watching enough episodes of Dragon's Den to realise that's not always the best place to go and pitch where the investment money is going to go. Yeah, and again, just going back to what we were saying earlier about the struggle, the harder the challenge, the steeper hill to climb, the bigger rock to push, and again, you've got to be able to push that rock. And you've got to know in your whole heart, wholeheartedly, know that it's actually capable of being done, then do it. Pick the hardest route <laughs> possible. Then you know you're on the right route. And that's what we're choosing to do. And again, money would have been really nice because it would have been more comfortable for us in the background. But the reality is, is that that would have been nice. But what we've done with it. Yeah, we might have had two members of staff in there much earlier in to understand the knee. We might have done a little bit more with marketing. We could have squandered it in many different ways but the reality is is that we're not going to suggest anything to you in fact I was on a phone call with a chap this morning and you've just told me how much you pay on SEO a month and you do realise that I'm going to be turning up and suggesting that you buy an off the shelf theme for $99 and spend no more than $500 customising it any further that's my realms that I want to do I know how much you pay for that and It's in the thousands of pounds. And again, they are relatively large business, blah, blah, blah. And again, I can't tell you to do this stuff and to spend that money because I wouldn't do it. And when it comes to your content creation, yeah, you've got to suck eggs and do the hardest route possible. But if if you want to work with me, that's the, you want me to suggest these things to you, then they are going to be the hardest route possible because they are the right way of doing it. Anyway, onto a tangent. Interesting connections from Amazon and eBay for it. We released the Magento Foundation course on Udemy, which went kind of quite well. Not as well as expected, but generally impressed. It's an interesting one, that, because obviously Udemy say you should market to your own email list and your own audience. So we've not done that because you've already got access to the course on the site. We're, We're using Udemy to try and draw attention to understand an E from people who don't know about it so it'd be pointless telling you to go to udemy to view the courses when they're already on the website so we're doing things a little bit different on udemy perhaps that's why we're not seeing as big an uptake because we are every member that's come from there is coming from searching udemy themselves we've not sent anyone there yeah yeah you've got two million users and we want some of them yeah (laughs) you go and do the marketing because that's my blatant view on this for it i'm not going to send you someone to join your website when we want it the other way around. So that's the brutal route of doing it. And again, that's why maybe the success hasn't been great as maybe as high as what we were expecting, but still genuinely impressed by that. Jim's podcast went live on Monday, was it, Dave? Tuesday. Tuesday. So I can't even tell you what day of the week we're on right now because they're all the same. I always try and podcast go on a Tuesday just because I know that a lot of the guys, Monday morning, Monday afternoon, Monday in general is not a great day to put fresh content out for anyone to watch because they're going to be mad busy after the weekend. Mm -hmm. Tuesdays tend to be a good day. If I'm ever going to put a blog post, podcast, anything like that out, it will most likely be a Tuesday or a Thursday, not always Fridays. Indeed. So, and again, the tutorials on Mugento's ship using pit pack extensions are coming out. We are working on them. The same as that we've got several courier integrations out. What have we got? Currently, we have a UK mail and parcel force that are live on the site. I believe the, Mark, who was in the guide, he was nipping away. He should be back in the next week or so. And then we've got DPD, Royal Mail, DMO, another one which I've forgotten. But yeah, there's some more couriers guides coming very soon okay and moving on Dave something which I brought up in one of the happy hours yes I love this topic do you want to explain that one 
Yeah, sure. So this was Matt brought it up, not this week, but the week before. And it was in response to a question that someone had asked regarding multiple listings on eBay and whether they should do auctions or buy it now. And Matt basically turned it around and said, our requirement as entrepreneurs is that when someone offers us an or option, so for example, should I list on auctions or buy it now? We should always look to see if we can do and. Yeah. Can we list on auctions and buy it now? And that is just the way that we're wired. Yeah. Is this the way in which you're wired as well? It's our responsibility to look for the and option. So if anybody ever comes to you, would you like that one or that one? And they're both really good. <laughs> and <laughs> it's exactly how you should be wired. And that's our responsibility is to look at those options. Somebody else would make the choice. That's not the case for us. We're, we're entrepreneurs. Me, you, Dave, the three of us, which can be listened to by a larger audience, but you listen to this, is that it's our responsibility to look for the and options because that's how we're wired. We should look for these options. So somebody else would make an or option. Okay, they would either have that or that. Nah. That's not the way which works. We always look for the and option. We're practical, I hasten to add. So again, just putting it back into context when we were suggesting about the investment back at the beginning is that that wasn't right for us. So it was an or option all the way. It wasn't a case that we could take investment and then do it. Is that we were going to do it anyway for it, but we couldn't see value in it and do it. So choose them wisely. But if you ever get offered an or option and you like both options, And that's what you should be hardwired to think. And I see that as my responsibility as an entrepreneur is to always look for the and options. So moving on, Dave, what we got coming up? Well, we have a plethora of things coming up for the next six months and beyond. Firstly, let's start with Stripe. So we have the Magento website course, or designing a Magento website course. Yeah, I love this one. Sorry, Dave, just jumping straight in. How to design a Magento website on a budget of $99 or $100. It's just sick. And again, I've just seen a bill from somebody for a custom-built Magento website, and I can't mention the numbers because you would freak. You could probably buy a house for that kind of money. Not in the UK. (laughs) (laughs) But it would be a fantastic sports car, put it that way. And I just don't think that's right. It's just... I'm trying not to swear, from I'm frankly honest. Yeah, put it this way, we can't see where you would get that amount of value from a website. Yeah. What is on that website which is worth that amount of money? Yeah, well, why would you want to put yourself that kind of large amount of money in the hole? And we, can, we can't recommend that to you because that's not the route which we would take. The route which we would take is pick the best theme available, which you know that it works, and again, it's used by like 5,000 plus businesses, it works brilliant. I've personally used it numerous times. It's a fantastic theme, and it will get you 99% of the way there. No, let's take let's just say that it will take you 90% of the way there because I'm sure whatever budget you've got left over, you can then go and spend on cool extensions. So if you want a one-page checkout, for example, you're not having to worry about your budget because you know in the back of your head you only paid like 60, 70 quid for a theme. It's going to look fantastic when it's finished. So a one-step checkout for 100, 150 pounds is like a bargain. You've got this extra budget to go and buy those luxuries for your website. And the other crucial one is that you're not five grand in the hole before you've even got any customers to the website. You're like minimum $99 in the hole because you've just been used this off-the-shelf theme. We've shown you how to build it. We have zero coding requirement, I hasten to add. And the bits where there are some code for customizations, I'm going to give you the copy and paste code. It's like, if you can manage copy and paste, you can design a Magento website. That's the bar which we're aiming for. We're trying to make it matte and Dave-proof as possible. So the design course, I'm super stoked about because nobody else has done anything like this before. We're going to really annoy a lot of Magento website designers. Yeah. There's one that springs to mind that I'm not sure I can say it. (laughs) Yeah. That we know who do take the mick a little bit in their pricing for Magento designs. Yeah, we're not saying that this is the right route for everybody by any means. We're not saying that don't employ a third-party design company. What we're saying is that 
if you want your handheld all the way through with a third party company, then it's going to cost you a small fortune. Mm-hmm. You could choose our way. We'll get you a fantastic looking website if you're prepared to put the time and the effort in to do it. And we'll baby step you every step of the way and make sure that it's like as low amount of code as possible. You will not see us in a text editor hand coding PHP because you don't need that. The only sections where you need some HTML will be copy and paste for it. But if you do need help or some form of customization, then this is where like companies like Design Hub will be able to step in and help you out with those key pieces because you want something beyond what the theme is being able to offer. And then that would be money well spent in that. Again, you're not five grand or more in the hole for a website which has driven you zero sales. And the way which we look at it is that be a couple of hundred pounds in the hole and spend whatever money you've got left over on the marketing. Again, this is why the marketplaces work because they've got the customer's eyeballs on those sites. That's why they're super productive. Whereas the, when you've got your own website, you've got to build your own audience to go to that website. And again, we will be suggesting the tough routes to build that audience, but to build that audience which stay with the website and go back to whatever funds you've got left over, spend it wisely. Google AdWords, product listing ads, not only on Google, but also on Amazon as well. So think about a affiliate network as well think about other forms of marketing for your website and focus it on the things which are going to make you money without being several grand sat in the hole so really excited about that one and i'll shut up now (laughs) next up amazon guides now these uh get brought up every happy hour asking where we got up to and the answer is that yes, we have the plan. We have an outline of the way that we want to take these. We have to bear in mind that M3 Pro is due a massive update on how they handle Amazon. And we, we know that update's coming. Yeah, it's coming soon. They've said by the end of Q2, which isn't going to be that far away. So yeah, the, we, chances are we may run into an overlap. By the time it's ready, they may have released. We do speak to M3 Pro, but they've not told us any dates, times, whenever that's going to be released. So uh, the plan so far is regarding how we would use the Amazon integration in M3 Pro. And we will get started with that as soon as we can. We are in talks with Amazon. We are currently waiting on an Amazon account. Yeah, again, we're trying to do this the right way as well. And like, as we all know, sometimes the right way is the hardest way of doing it. So we're trying to play within some politics to get some stuff done. Yeah, and obviously, as you've seen with the eBay guides, we use fashion because fashion can be one of the trickiest categories to list to due to the variations. And we would be looking to do the same on Amazon so we can try and cover all bases with you. Amazon have a locked down fashion category. So if you're a fashion seller on Amazon, you need pre-approval. And they don't have like a sandbox environment or anything like that. So anything that we do list would actually generally list onto Amazon. And that's why these things are taking a little bit longer. But to do it the right way, we need to do it that way. And we are on it. We are obviously just working our way through some politics with Amazon. Hopefully we'll get there very soon. Yeah, indeed. We got an invoicing system for the premium members. So if you're looking for an invoice, we're unable to produce those right now for you. But I do have the code to put them on as a invoice within your system. I've just got to write a lecture bit, a couple of well. I'm going to say I've done the hard bit because I outsourced it for fifty dollars and it works really well. But now it needs my attention to write the code so that it's automated in the background. That's one of our internal things which we need to do. The same for export my listings as well. Now that I've had my warm up for two weeks of COVID <laughs> or so on the responsive listing template builder, emails are not going to throw me anything which I've not come across because I've had some very ugly stuff thrown at me for the template builder. And again, I've learned so many new things PHP and MySQL and scalability. Again, I thought it was okay before, and now I realize that some stuff I don't really know and I learned loads. So I've really enjoyed that. And again, the outcome for you is that you've got this fantastic tool which you can use. And again, another little tip in your box for understanding E. We've also got mention about Magento Live as well. That may be happening. It's going to be quite an exciting one for us. And again, we've mentioned back at the beginning that it's going to be a challenge because we're not just going to turn up there and go, we think you should sell on eBay. We've got to turn up there and be really excited. 
Oh, Dave, you're off to the United States very shortly as well, aren't you? Potentially, yes. It's looking more and more likely as the weeks go by. But like we mentioned a little earlier, understanding he can operate with me and Matt working remotely. And it's looking likely that I will be spending two to three months out in California in September, October, November, maybe into December, depending on the day that we get out there. And yeah, that's going to be an interesting one for me. Nice little mini adventure out with my girlfriend, who is also doing some bits and pieces with what she does out there. But yeah, so it's going to be really cool, actually, because I accidentally got chatting to someone really high up at Magento on Twitter one day, and then we we connected on LinkedIn and sent a few emails backwards and forwards. So there's a meeting lined up there at Magento, at Magento's headquarters in L.A., and also I'm going to try and pull in a few favours with our contacts over here in the UK and Europe to get an introduction in San Jose to eBay up there. That would be quite cool to go and do a bit of missionary work <laughs> for understanding it, knock on doors. Hello, I'd like to tell you about the people who are understanding it. And yeah, so basically there's going to be a lot of that sort of thing going on. But also the one thing that I would absolutely love to do is to see some of our American members whilst I'm out there. Now, I know there are a couple who are in California already. I know there's a lot in Florida. That will be a big ask. But I know there's obviously Pat in Texas and there's a few others around Idaho, Utah way. If I get there, which, like I say, it's looking likely, we'll be there for at least two and a half months. It would be great to meet up with some familiar names, at least, and put some faces to them. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and hopefully, like I said, we can try and spread the word a little bit out in stateside, which is really interesting. Indeed. Now, one thing which we also like to do is that to just show that we're human. And again, this is the whole podcast has been about. But also, just to make the point, is that we really are human. We fell quite badly. And then again, we've done this in the other podcasts as well. So, Dave, I'm going to ask you a question. What one thing do you think you could have done better over the last six months? There's a few things. Over the past six months, emails is more of a recent one. Um, I do this really annoying thing where I'll check my emails last thing at night and an interesting email will come and go, right, I'll action that in the morning. And then I'll get to my desk in the morning and there'll be four or five, ten, depending on what day it is, emails. I'll go through them and I'll totally forget about the one that came in last night because I've slept since then. And some way that my mind works is I'll realise maybe a day, two days later, if I need to get back to that email. And I've now sort of come up with my own little method of doing this. I now use Google's little star method, which I haven't used previously. That seems to be working quite well. And also forums. The past sort of three weeks, I'd like to say I've been pretty good at the forums. And that basically because Matt gave me a pre-warning and said, listen, for the next two weeks, my head is going to be down building the responsive template can you keep your eye on the forums? Anything that you can't deal with, let me know. Whereas previously, I would look at, and again, it's the way that I got into this bad trap of how I handle the forums. I can see, like, unread posts, and I would read the post and go, oh, yeah, I'll look into that. I'd make a note, and then I'd go to the next one, and then I'd lose that one. I wouldn't be able to go back and find it because, like I said, the forums aren't busy. I'd have the question, but I'd have forgotten to write down who asked it or what thread it was or copied a link. And there was a few times where there was, you know, I'd gone back a few weeks later and found threads which I hadn't responded to. I felt terrible. So, again, now I've got a different way of handling the forums, which hopefully will be better and nothing will get missed. And also, previously, if I didn't know, I would wait for Matt to pick it up. But like I said, Matt's been that busy. Now I know that if anything I can answer, I will ping Matt directly for an answer to. So, yeah, those were my two main things, which over the past few months, certainly, I could definitely have done better at, and I will try to do better with my new and improved system of dealing with these things. Yeah, it's just where I'd say that I deleted about, well, not delete, I just archived about 100 emails. Yeah, I remember that afternoon. (laughs) I just couldn't cope. And again, I've been on top of them since. Yeah, well, I mean, my email gets nowhere near as bad as Matt's does, because the way that the... Emails are set up is that support emails do go to Matt's inbox and not mine. And you've received quite a few of those lately. Well, you? exactly. And Matt has now learned that there's a little forward button. <laughs> so. well, anyway, they're, they're all non-urgent ones. Non-urgent, non-nerd ones, importantly. <laughs> yeah. 
And most of the, the other ones just got their call. Can you pop this in the forums, please, etc., etc. Yeah. There's a lot of nonsense, which you've gone through. And again, it's just the, one of the challenges of growing the business. And again, you've got that with your business as well. Customer support overhead will get larger. And yeah, it was a horrible thing to do quite some time ago. I hasten to add. And... But it was actually getting you down wasn't it and that was why you had to do it because matt was every time he'd do a thing where he'd get through like 10 or 15 emails we'd record a video we'd come back and another 10 or 15 more had arrived and he was just feeling like he wasn't getting anywhere he wasn't getting through them so yeah drastic action drastic measures yeah (laughs) so just on my point of view is that number one i wish i could have coded more over the last six months again just imagine what i would be like if i had a team of developers that would just be insane that is next on your wish list, isn't it, for understanding it, is to get at least one developer. Mm-hmm. Developers aren't cheap, sadly. <laughs> developers are not cheap, especially considering what I want to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's the curiosity on there. So I wish I had coded more and also worked harder as well. And again, I've something which I'm actually really impressed about, actually, which was a decision which I wanted to make and actually do some time ago, which was to get my body clock sorted out, which is to get up earlier Number one for McDonald's breakfast at 5 a.m. <laughs> but on a more serious note is that I know that if I can get up early, I can do so much in those four extra hours in the morning is unreal. And that's what you get in forum replies at five o'clock in the morning or just a little bit later is because I'm up, I'm active. There's no one there to bother you, is there? There's no distractions. <laughs> I don't check email. I listen to other ones. There's three email types, which I look out for specifically. But it's like free time for me. And it's fantastic because the family's asleep. I can start working on the understanding e-business and the other things which are going on in the background and be able to deliver them more sensibly. And again, some like on a Tuesday, for example, and I know I'm going to be really late is going to be up like in comparison really really late is that i will dive off in the afternoon to grab 30 minutes sleep and have a little quick little power nap so that i can actually be intelligible or be responsive when it comes around to the happy hour for example but for me my biggest win was and again i knew about this so this kind of retrospective look back on the last six months is that i'm really glad that i made the decision to sort the body clock out get up earlier because the output is is that we've got so much done in the background again we've got so much more to do and the one thing which i could do more better and again it's too late because the time's passed which is just work harder for it and again the 5 a.m starts for me is like a massive win because i'm able to get through as much as possible so dave on that note we've talked for quite a period of time yeah it's gonna be a long one yeah but on that note is that this is the six month update for us and understanding and if there's Any one thing which you take away from myself and Dave is that there's rarely the easy way. The harder the challenge, and again, you make sure it is a challenge which you can actually complete, is that the more difficult it is, the more likely it's the right thing to do. Okay, and we're not afraid of no salary. We're not afraid of doing long hours, being up from five o'clock in the morning to very, very late in the evening, to get in there, to get dug in, to get dirty, to just make the difference. That Again, that's the other responsibility of us as entrepreneurs is to do the work for it. So get in there. So if you're listening to this right now, no matter what time of day it is, do that extra 20 minutes, do that extra 30 minutes, do the extra hour. Get up that one hour earlier, get in there get and do it, get dirty and just make stuff happen because you would make it happen out of brute force. The, the understanding he just won't fail because we will just put so much brute force into it to make it work. And that's just the way which we work. So let's just put it this way. If you worked an extra hour every day outside of your office hours, just on your business rather than for your business, mm-hmm. that it just eight days, that's a whole working day more than what your competitors are doing. Think of that competitive advantage. You just gained a working day over your competitors just by doing it one hour. Yeah. One hour every day. After eight days, you're a day up. Yeah. Turn the TV off. Go and do some work. Go and work. So if you're watching a series, for example, it'll still be there. It'll end up on Netflix or Amazon Prime, whatever, later on. And just get in there and get to do it. Do the extra couple of minutes, okay? Because it really does make a massive difference. It may not like immediately see the differences but even if it's a case of that you get up earlier 
go for a breakfast at McDonald's, as the case may be, and sit there and pause and actually think about what you're doing with your business. And again, if you're in a business, how could you work smarter during the daytime? Well, think about the next big project which you want to work upon and plan it in advance, going back to the eBay webinar, which we did. That didn't happen by accident. That came through from an awful lot of planning, a lot of rehearsals, and thank goodness everything went off really well. We had over 500 people live on that webinar as well. And again, all this stuff didn't happen by accident. We didn't just turn up and go, oh, this is how you install the website, (laughs) blah, blah, blah. It happened because we put our groundwork in the background. So if you take one thing away, we're in there in the background working away. We want you to be in the background making a success of your business as well. On that note, for myself, Mr. Matt. And for me, Dave. We'll catch you soon. Cheerios. See you soon.